This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, I've got a real treat in store for you today. We're going to look at the world's very first feature-length animated film. No, no, actually what I'm talking about came out a whole 11 years before Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We're going to look at The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. While Snow White can proudly boast to be the first Cell animated feature film, the very first animated film in any medium is Prince Ahmed, animated all but single-handedly by German director Lottie Reininger using cardboard cutouts. Typically, one doesn't think of this kind of cutout animation as being particularly artistic, but this animation, inspired by Chinese shadow puppetry, adds a surreal, dreamlike quality that you really can't find anywhere else outside of her own filmography. We all put on a little introduction explaining to us that what we're about to see is, sadly, not an original cut of the movie. Nobody really paid much attention to film preservation back in those days, so many films were lost or accidentally destroyed. Luckily for us, a modern version of the movie exists for us to enjoy today, and it's better to have this movie as it is than nothing at all. Like Nosferatu before him, Prince Ahmed can never be destroyed! <laughs> The Adventures of Prince Ahmed. The Not-Dead Terrorist. Amidst some animation that looks like it would later inspire Fantasia, we're introduced to our cast of characters. The Sorcerer. Played by renowned actor Count Olaf. The Sorcerer needs a sandwich. Ahmed. No, 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 you said Ahmed. It's Ahmed. <laughs> Aladdin. Who will never make another movie after this. I mean, Aladdin? What kind of story potential does he have? <laughs> the African sorcerer was the most powerful magician of his time. His knowledge of the secrets of black magic was second to no one in the whole world. But also, no one was as ugly as he was, and he could not change that. So really, there's not much point in his knowledge of black magic being second to none, is there? If you're that ugly, wouldn't fixing that be on the top of your to-do list? No, instead he uses his magic to create a flying wooden horse in order to impress Denizad, the daughter of the Caliph. The Caliph's birthday was being celebrated with great pomp. And since Aladdin is in this movie, he decided to bring his own entertainment for the festivities. Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. A huge crowd had gathered in front of the splendid palace. Where they flew the flag of... some generic, vaguely Muslim country. Man, even the Germans of 1928 were referencing Durka Durkistan. The sorcerer shows off his magic horse, the Khalif says he'll pay any price to have it, and the sorcerer says that the only price he'll accept is Denizad. The Khalif can't go back on his word, swearing on the beard of the Prophet is kind of a big deal, so his son Ahmed interferes by asking if he can take the horse for a test ride. But because he doesn't know how to fly it properly, he just ends up soaring higher and higher into the air. Wait, what? Didn't they say that the Caliph was powerless to go back on his word? Why didn't he just stick his guards on the sorcerer before if that was always an option? Maybe Prince Ahmed made it look like he was killed when he was testing the horse, so all bets are off? How can one bring the horse back down to us? The lever at the head drives it into the air? And the lever at the tail brings it to Earth. 
Oh my god, he invented Mr. Garrison's it! And we're ready to go! We cut back to Ahmed as he tries to figure out how to control the horse. He groped along the wooden back and discovered another lever near its tail. And then it quickly turned into a robot chicken sketch. <laughs> Unfortunately, he finds that he's pretty freaking lost. Under him, east of the sun and west of the moon, lay the magic islands of Wack Wack. The magical island of Wack Wack, huh? Was it right next to the island of Lesbos? I'll give you a Wack Wack, and not the fun kind. On one of these islands, he perceived a graceful little pleasure seat. Seriously? Graceful little pleasure seat? Hey, I didn't write this! He wanders inside and immediately runs into a harem. Best adventure ever. They woke up when he approached and greeted the beautiful stranger joyfully, offering him delicious refreshments. Who are you, maidens? We serve the Princess Peribanu, ruler of the spirit world of Wack Wack. I guess the island of Wack Wack really is next to the island of Lesbos. Ha! Told ya! Since men are something of a rarity on this island, the girls all start fighting for Achmed's attention. Girls, girls, you're all two-dimensional! No, instead of doing what would only make too much sense and try to get the girls to get along by saying there's plenty of Achmed to go around, he just runs off. What are you, gay? He flies to one of the neighboring islands, where he finds Peri Banu, queen of the islands, bathing with her servants. Wow, we're looking at a real milestone with this movie. Not only is this the first feature-length animated film, but it's also the first animated softcore porno. At the sight of her, Achmed's heart trembled, and he was inflamed with violent love for this bewitching queen. He took her feather dress and concealed it between the bushes. And now it's turning into a robot chicken sketch far more than I thought it might. Ha ha ha! Come and get your clothes, if you can! Like a horny teenager in a slasher movie, Achmed makes his move. Give me back my cloak of feathers, implored Peribanu. Come with me to my beautiful homeland, entreated the prince. Oh, Rapey Jerry, I always knew you were the one. Hey, you can't say that. Can I use that particular clip from your review of Taboo? Uh, probably not a good idea. Peri Banu faints and Ahmed takes her away to... China? A brilliant navigator, Ahmed is not. Do not be afraid of me, O oh beautiful one. I only took you without your knowledge or consent to another country on the other side of the known world, but don't be afraid of me, O oh beautiful one. You do not know the power of the demons of Wack Wack. Neither do we. What demons of Wack Wack? We saw a couple of bird ladies, we saw far too little of your sexy harem girls. What demons are you talking about? Back in Baghdad, the imprisoned sorcerer looks for his horse through his... magical pubes? and finds it and Ahmed in China. He turns into a bat and escapes, and no, it's never explained why he couldn't just do this before now. Peri Banu still isn't keen on living with Ahmed, not even after he says, Come on! a lot, and he begrudgingly gives her back her bird suit so she can fly back back to Wack Wack. Gladly she received it, but when she saw how intensely he suffered and how young and beautiful he was, her heart was overcome with love. More like her heart was overcome with Stockholm Syndrome. Aww, he's sad and he's hot. I can't leave him! The sorcerer then shows up, turns into a kangaroo, traps Ahmed in a deep gorge, then disguises himself as a servant to the Emperor, to whom he then sells Peribanu. The sorcerer transformed the bags of gold the Emperor had paid for Peribanu into winged Afrits. So let's review. This guy is so skilled at magic that he can turn himself into animals, he can change ethnicities, 
and he can turn bags of gold into horrible little demon monsters. Are you sure he can't make himself any less ugly? Because with the whole gold into demons thing, it's looking more and more like this guy is just an idiot. With the help of these Afrites, the sorcerer lifted Ahmed into the air and brought him to the most dreadful place he could think of. Any reason why he couldn't do this with his horse? He pins Ahmed down to the top of a volcano by turning the Afrites into rocks. Dude, you didn't have to sell Perry Banu for half a dozen bags of gold just to get some rocks. I think there are plenty of rocks just lying around for you to use. Ugh. Apparently this volcano is the home of a powerful witch, the sorcerer's greatest enemy, who also happens to have the Legion of Demons to do her bidding. She noticed that on top of one of her volcanoes, something unusual was happening, and sent her slaves to find out the reason. Not quite as effective as fly my pretties fly, is it? The witch shows mercy on Ahmed upon learning that he's here by the sorcerer's doing. Ahmed implored the witch to take him to the Isles of Wakwak to liberate his beloved Peribanu, for he believed that the demons had brought her there. Of course the demons would take her back to Wakwak, because... Demons are into sexy bird cosplayers? Help me free Peribanu! Help me Peri Banubi. You're my only hope. The witch conjures up some magical armor and weapons for Ahmed. You know, your basic, it's dangerous to go alone, take this scenario. And they save Peri Banu from a fate worse than death. It's Peri Banu down there. We must stop the wedding! The witch succeeded in disturbing the wedding. She just showed up and everyone was disturbed. But then those previously mentioned demons of Wack Wack show up and make off with Peri Banu. I know I just made a Zelda reference, but now this is turning into Our Princess is in Another Castle, the movie. Ahmed gets one of the demons to take him to Wack Wack, but it's then sealed off by a couple of mountains that weren't there before. Or maybe it's supposed to be some kind of dome? I don't know. Luckily, the gates of Wack Wack tell Ahmed that he can get through them if he has Aladdin's magic lamp. Even more luckily still, Aladdin just happens to be right there, waiting for some brave prince to show up and demand a favor in exchange for saving his life. How convenient! Really, it seems like this would be a perfect opportunity for the sorcerer to show up and offer to help Ahmed save Peri Banu in exchange for his freedom, and then he get to marry Dinazad like he originally planned. Anyway, Aladdin tells a story of how he got here. I was a poor tailor in the city of the Caliph. Weird. First it's Prince Ahmed, then it's Aladdin, and now it's the Thief and the Cobbler. Apparently the sorcerer recruited Aladdin to get the magic lamp for him, which he was eager to do after learning of the beautiful Denizad. Unfortunately, the lamp can only be found in a dark cave deep underground. Hmm. This story seems very familiar. An old sorcerer leads a poor beggar into a deep, dark cave where he has to find a magic lamp. Seems like there's one thing missing, though. If you say what I think you're going to say... That's right! The old sorcerer needs his talking bird friend voiced by Gilbert Gottfried! That's it. Rewrite your own stars. I quit. Are you quite sure you want to do that, love? Hmm, maybe not. So yeah, the great wizard dumbass threw Aladdin down into the cave for having the nerve to demand that he be helped back out before he hand over the lamp, but Aladdin escapes thanks to the aid of the spirits of the lamp. And unlike every other creature we've seen so far, they look like they were animated with sand or some kind of fine powder. Quite a contrast from the stark, pure black silhouettes, right? He used the spirits to lavish Denizad with treasures and build her a new palace, and sure, this is all very marvelous and everything, he said with total sincerity. Just look at how cavernous this palace is in the completely two-dimensional world. But I can't help but think, how much time has elapsed so far? I presume that all of this must have been going on while Ahmed was gallivanting about in Wack Wack in China, but it seems like only a few hours have passed. 
It seems to me like Aladdin's story has more going on in it that can be done in one afternoon. Anyway, the Caliph allowed Aladdin to marry Denizad, and then the palace just up and disappeared with her inside it. Aladdin was sentenced to death, but he was able to escape on a boat that followed the laws of physics a lot more than you might think in this kind of medium, and eventually found himself where we are now. Then the witch shows up to get the plot moving again. Hurry, Ahmed, and free Peri Banu! The spirits want to kill her because she left to follow you. No, she didn't. I kidnapped her to make her my bride. That's even worse, you prick! Go save her already! Only the lamp can open the gates of Wack Wack. Can it? You were able to conjure up magical weapons and armor from the depths of hell itself. Surely your magic can move a couple of rocks. Apparently, the only thing that can be done is to kill the sorcerer and reclaim the lamp, so the witch summons the sorcerer to them by dancing like the sorcerer's apprentice. <laughs> And then it quickly turns into the battle between Merlin and Madame Mim. As neither could conquer the other, they turned into fish. As you do. And they fought in the water. Then they regained their own shapes and threw flames at each other. Incendio! Eventually the sorcerer is vanquished, and I thought the witch might just make off with the lamp for herself, but she gives it to Aladdin and Ahmed. For all the inventiveness that these magic users have, they aren't very practical, are they? The Spirit Battle of Wack Wack. Okay. So far, this narrator has done a wonderful job of providing just the right kind of gravitas to this story, but you can't say that line without just sounding silly. Uh, James Earl Jones, you want to give it a try? The Spirit Battle of Wack Wack. Yeah, it's good, but still silly. Uh, Christopher Lee, you want to give it a go? The Spirit Battle of Wack Wack. Close. Very, very close. Uh, Morgan Freeman, what about you? The spirit battle of Wack Wack. Nope, God himself can't make it sound good. This line is just silly. Our heroes bravely fight off the demons before they can kill a Peri Banu. If only you didn't steal my bird costume, then I could fly out of here. Yes, I've noted the irony. Working on it! The demons have our heroes on the ropes, and so the witch gets her muppety mitts on the lamp again. Now legions of benevolent spirits streamed out of the magic lamp. And then they all flew toward the giant ovum floating nearby. So the demons are sent back to hell from whence they came. Peri Banu and Denizad are saved, and this happens. Aladdin found his beloved Denizad, whom he embraced with tears of joy. Then she kissed her brother, who she macked on with lips of HELLO! The palaces returned to Baghdad, and they all lived happily ever after. So that was The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, and you guys should really check it out for yourselves. Yeah, I made fun of it, that's what you're all here for, and there are some things that you could have a laugh at, but honestly, it's a surreal experience that you really need to have for yourself. The animation, stunning in its simplicity, feels more like a dream than a movie, and you can't help but feel entranced as you're watching it, making its flaws very forgivable. Our hero's motivations aren't really more developed than, hey, you're hot, wanna do it? The villain's kind of a dumbass in spite of his genius of the dark arts. It's difficult to tell exactly how much time is elapsing between plot lines, but again, it's kind of hard to really care about that as you're just experiencing this movie. It really is just a shame that we don't have more movies like this, because in this day and age, when so many animated films are cookie-cutter, by the numbers, we really could stand to have more films like this with just that little bit more creativity. See you later. Hey, clear the way in the old bazaar. Hey, you, let us through. It's a bright new star. Oh, come be the first on your block to meet his eye. 
make way, here he comes, ring bells, bang the drum. Are you gonna love this guy? Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Ababwa. Can you flex, show some respect, down on one knee. Now try your best to stay calm, brush up your Sunday salon. Then come and meet his spectacular coterie. Prince Ali, mighty is he, Ali Ababwa. His ten regular men, definitely. He faced galloping hordes. A hundred bad guys with swords. Who sent those goons to their lord? My Prince Ali. He's got 75 golden carrots. Don't they look lovely, June? Fabulous, Harry. I love the feathers. When it comes to exotic type mammals. Has he got a zoo? I'm telling you, it's a world class menagerie. Prince Ali, handsome as hey, Ali Ababwa. That physique, how can I say? Wake at the neck. Well, get on out in that square. Adjust your veil and prepare. To gawk and grovel and stare at Prince Ali. He's got 95 white birds and mom. He's got the monkeys. Let's see the monkeys. Sight lovely to see, and that good people is why he got dialed up and dropped by. With 60 elephants, mama's glory, bears and lions, a friend, and a boy, with his 40 bakers, his books, his bakers, his birds, and water, like and Hey guys, I have a package to open, and it's from a name that you may be familiar with. Oh boy. Can you guess who it might be, Raven? Does it have to do with talking dogs and monkeys? I think it might. Sean Bateman! Sean Bateman, who has... A disturbingly vested interest in my reviewing of the air stended butterverse beyond what I already <laughs> have. Oh, he's he's recommended some doozies other than that. <laughs> Disco worms is the latest thing he's been talking about. I wonder if this is a copy of Disco Worms. Oh lord. <laughs> maybe I'm scared. Don't be afraid. You've conquered worse, maybe. <sighs> But have I conquered more annoying? That's the question. <laughs> I have seen worse. Far worse, yes. But Yes, you've conquered more annoying, too. Have I? Oh my god. Okay, included is a, a car decal for something called Trail Smoke Eaters. Hopefully that'll be explained in the letter here. Or in the movie that's been included that I didn't see what it was just yet. Dear Bob Show, I apologize for sending you Monkey Up. Try to apologize harder. I, I, I was about to say, I don't think your apology is accepted, Sean. No. <laughs> but you gave your feds the gift of your brother during the air studded Butterverse. <laughs> okay? That means you have to punish me with Monkey Up? <laughs> Hope this DVD is worthy for the box's next meal. I reviewed the Jungle Book as... Or, I reviewed the Jungle Book one as penance for sending you monkey up. Plus, I have enclosed a sticker of my city's junior, a hockey team, uh, that have won two world championships. Oh, well. Thanks, don't I feel like a heel? <laughs> Great job, trail smoke eaters. Not sure what your name means, but hey, you're winning two world championships. Good for you guys. Congrats. 
And enclosed, we have... Oh boy. <laughs> a double feature with Jungle Book, Ricky Tiki Tabby to the rescue. Because they share an expanded Rudyard Kipling universe, I guess. And Zorro, Generation Z. Where he rides a motorcycle and has a lightsaber. Oh boy. Oh dear. And the animation on Jungle Book looks very similar to that of Scrooge's ghostly tale. <laughs> it's a jungle out there, and this wild, laughter-filled adventure the whole family will enjoy. I ain't getting so sick of that phrase, the whole family will enjoy. Code for crap. <laughs> Ricky Tiki Tavi is a little mongoose with a lot of attitude who's also the most amazing snake fighter on Earth. Now his help Does he is... also have a big heart? I'm sure he does. <laughs> Now his help is needed to protect human Mowgli and his friends from the fierce tiger Shere Khan. Yeah, because, you know, snakes, tigers, they're pretty much the same thing. Who has rallied the wolves to drive the people from their village. Join the wise-cracking Ricky Tiki Tavi, Brave Mowgli, Blue the Bear, and Bagheera the Black Panther as they fight back against Shere Khan's evil scheme and make the jungle a safe home for everyone. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It does. And here's the description for Zorro Generation Z. Action! Adventure! Fast motorcycles! Dot, dot, dot. And one of the most entertaining and legendary heroes of all time. Sorry, most enduring heroes of all time. Pardon me. Yes, entertaining has nothing to do with it. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Diego de la Vega is a modern day young man. It, I, I'm sorry, modern day? Modern day young man? Modern day does not mean lightsabers! <laughs> a modern day young man entering his first year at the university. That's it, just. The university, there's only one in the entire world. Okay. In the mo Yeah, I was about to say, in the modern day, there's only one. <laughs> a descendant of Zorro's past, Diego finds good reason to don the famous mantle. The beloved city of his birth is growing increasingly corrupt, melding an historic legend with the powers, high-tech gadgetry, and vehicles of a modern-day superhero, the all-new Zorro rides again. <laughs> that is going to be... Fantastic. Oh, boy. <laughs> I can't wait to find a place to stick that in the schedule. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> well, thank you, Sean. I'm actually kind of, sort of, looking forward to these a little bit more than I am the air extended Butterverse movies you keep on recommending to me. Screw you. <laughs> How about Disco Worms? Anyway, <laughs> anyone who wants to send me uh, fan mail, movies, comics, whatever, go ahead and send it to the P.O. box in the corner, and I'll see you guys later. Subscribe. Like. Follow. Oh.